Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And welcome to my guide on which helmets to choose for your personal electric vehicle. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. So in today's episode, I will tell you about what things to look for when choosing a helmet for your personal electric vehicle. And we will also feature these two magnificent Shoei helmets. And I'll give you sort of a first impressions, first uh, you know look into these helmets. It's the EX0 and this is the X Spirit 3. They were provided by Shoei Poland. And actually, if you want to buy a Shoei helmet, just uh, go follow Shoi Pol Polska, Shoi Poland on Instagram, I'll link it below, and write them a DM. And then if you buy a helmet from them, you will receive a 30 euro goodie bag. So with a, I think with a microfiber cloth and some sort of other stuff. So this is pretty cool. Thank you Shoi for that. And sh thank you for lending me these two helmets for testing purposes. This is not a sponsored video by any means. I just got these for testing to, you know, check them out. So the first most important thing is always ride with a helmet. Even if it's a small distance, you set a example for other riders or future riders. And of course it is your safety because a small trip to, you know, to the grocery store might end up being a trip to the other side of the city. That happens to me a lot of times. And that is also why I always wear a helmet. Secondly, buy a helmet that is a full face helmet. So with a chin guard. This will prevent your jaw for, from looking really ugly if you would fall on your face. And yeah, it's um, just way more safe. I've seen too many pictures of PV riders with open face helmets just having their skin on, her, on their face torn apart. Um, yeah, it, 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 this might get really ugly. So always get a full, full face helmet and do not buy helmets from Alibaba or AliExpress. They don't have the necessary uh, certificates. Usually just buy something from known brands like, I know, O'Neill, Shoi, um, LS2. Don't buy stuff from AliExpress. In most cases, if you ride under 50 kilometers an hour or around 30 miles an hour, a uh, bicycle downhill helmet will be just enough. So this is a O'Neill backflip. Um, it, it would be cool if this helmet would have MIPS, um, but it doesn't have it. This is uh, a um, impact protection system. So it's used on a, a bit more expensive helmets. This one doesn't have it. It's for around $130. It's really light. It has a great field of view. You don't really feel it on your head. You can just ride all day long and you won't notice the weight as opposed to, for example, a motorcycle helmet like this. Let me just like this LS2. It weighs, I think, yeah, it weighs 1,350 grams. So this guy, Oh, you'll feel a lot when riding. It's heavy, it's bulky. When you ride under 50 kilometers an hour, usually, um, yeah, I would just recommend getting a bicycle helmet like this. And then you can also use goggles in the winter or if you ride faster. Similar good helmets in this category are like the Bell Super 3R, uh, the Fox Pro Frame, but the Fox Pro Frame is a bit not too comfortable for me. Liat. Uh, I think, yeah, Mickey from EVX is using a Liat helmet. These sort of helmets, bicycle helmets, under 50 kilometers an hour should be totally fine. You can use a motorcycle helmet like these showy ones. I will talk about them later. And also what is the benefit of having such a helmet over a cheap bicycle helmet or a cheap motorcycle helmet. If you ride above 50 kilometers an hour, 60 kilometers an hour, I would start considering getting a motorcycle helmet. And this is the first helmet I actually, actually got. This is the LS2 Pioneer, a motocross helmet for actually a similar price, price like the O'Neill, around $150 or even less. So this helmet originally also came with a visor. 
and with a, uh, I don't know, is, is it called cap? No idea. Which is also, by the way, available on the only back flip. I just have it off because it's more comfortable to store it and you can see my face better when I'm writing. <laughs> you know, pri priorities. Anyways, this one came also with this visor, but I just got it off because it was fogging up all the time and it's not really in a good shape. And it was uh, actually staying in such a position so I couldn't see anything. Uh, it is really a cheap helmet, the LS2. I wouldn't recommend getting it now that I know better. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing that about the own eel that is not so good and you have to check it out in, um, in helmets when you buy them is if the liner is um, exchangeable. So uh, for example this one you can't really pull out the inner headliner, the cheek pads you can pull off. In the LS2 you can pull out everything. It also has like this uh, Visor, second visor, um, pretty cool, but didn't really use it at all. It has a lot of ref reflections and it's sort of misty. Um, yeah, so not really happy with this one, but you know, that's the first thing I got. You got to start somewhere. Oh, yeah, now, now I'll show you what the difference is to a really good helmet like these showy ones. So the, the most expensive thing I've been told is uh, the shell of, of this, uh, of the of helmet. So. If you can look at this helmet, that's what uh, Martin showed me in, uh, in the Shoei headquarters, you can just, you know, bend it, flex it. It's, it's really bad, actually. It was so bad that the visor started not fitting over the helmet department. It's like, you don't really want something like that protecting you if you ride like 80 or 100 kilometers an hour on scooters or EUCs. So if you take a look at this one, this is the Shoei uh, x 3, can't even do it. <laughs> and on this one, there's a tiny bit of flex, but this is way safer. So um, actually the most important, most expensive part of helmets and Shoei have a great long experience in that because these are motorcycle helmets. They've been, been, been on the market for a very long time. The outer shell is made out of composite materials so it's you know a layered shell and a great thing about them as well when it comes to the fit is that they actually have different shell sizes so what manufacturers do now um, is that they create one shell and they then they just make a different amount of padding from the inside to accommodate like a bigger and smaller hat and the problem is then that the fit is not so uh, so snug and also your hat might look very huge or very small in it probably very small so in all of the Shoei helmets um, they have different shell sizes um, like the outer shell and then all of the stuff that is on the inside, like the cheek pads, the uh, headliner, like all of the stuff is adjustable, even to the part on the X Spirit 3 where you can adjust like separate elements. I, I, I might just pull it out. So this is really good. The shell is really safe. Of course, they have this EPS stuff in the, on the inside. So the more on the outside you get, the harder it gets and I think there are two or th there are actually three layers of that in the x 3, so that's pretty cool. Let's start with the x 3. This is like a MotoGP sort of style of helmet, racing helmet, and it's for around, I think, $700, something like that. It's a lot more than these two, but you can feel it pretty much on every part of this uh, helmet. I thought that this helmet, because it's huge, um, compared to my backflip, would be really warm. But actually it's not. It has a, um, I mean, it's really amazing. You have to put it on to really feel it. Uh, it has air vents here, here, and here, and also here. So you can just open them and close them. And the thing is that in a helmet like this, you know, they just put a hole in the, in the helmet or here it's just, you know, see-through. Uh, this part is see-through. But on the Shoys, there are actually channels on the inside of the helmet that provide air and get the, you know, warm air out. Turns out this helmet is much cooler for me than this, this, and this. 
So yeah, I was riding it back home. This feels surprisingly cool. I didn't really expect that. You can just, you know, open this one, this one, and, and it really changes how warm it is in this helmet when you're riding. So for winter and summer use, I think this is really, really awesome. The next thing I noticed about it, because, you know, this is a first impression, probably I'll do more of a in-depth review in two weeks when I'll be using these helmets on and off, is that it's super quiet. So there's like no wind noise at all if you just close the visor. With the visor up, there's a bit of wind noise, but also less than in these. And there's also this cool flap in the rear, like the spoiler. So yeah, you have uh, better aerodynamics. And honestly, for a helmet like this, um, I don't know how much it weighs exactly, but yeah, it, it doesn't feel heavy or bulky on your head. So this is pretty cool. Then. You have the visor. The visor is also uh, exchangeable. There's even like a small plastic part here so you can open it easier. And it has also these various levels. Boom, 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 boom. But the visor is really cool. You can easily exchange them. You just pull, pull, pull on this tab here and voila, you can put in a different visor. Putting in part is a bit more difficult, but it's not a hassle. You don't need any tools for that. Boom. Now it's in again. I can also show you the other um, visors I got from Shoy. Got another clear visor for our, this helmet and a clear visor for, for this one. So that's pretty cool. And the helmets also have five years of warranty. So if this part just gets you know worn out or doesn't work uh, after a certain period of time, then they can just exchange it. And this is also a matter of warranty. So that's pretty cool. I'm actually super surprised by this helmet. It's it has awesome airflow, and maybe I will just show you a bit of a cheek pads as well. Uh, boom. Oops. So this is one cheek pad, and there is like, I think, four different sizes for every shell size of the helmet. So you can really like fit and make it fit to your head. Here it's written 43. So this is the width at the widest point of the cheek pads. It's just 43 millimeters. And then there's the headliner. We can pull it out as well. So it's really well adjustable. You can just change that and you can also adjust the angle of the, of the helmet, which is pretty cool. Again, Really stoked on this one. Didn't expect that. A really cool helmet. Like if you ride only fast and you and you want to have it like really quiet, and you know we want the quality. You can spend a bit more money on your helmet. Then well, this is pretty awesome. And probably over the next couple of weeks, I'll be also testing out other helmets by Shoy. Uh, maybe some of the motocross ones uh, because that's also something I'm into and the Glamster. So you might be looking into that as well. I think that's all about like for now for this helmet. Oh, maybe one thing is like that the fit is quite tight. I mean, it's not so easy to get it on and off. Uh, you have to, you know, use a bit of force to make it like this and then put it on, uh, but it's really tight. So getting in on and off all the time is a bit, um, it's a bit difficult, but actually, oh, one, one more thing, the visibility when you look through the helmet, let me just you know, put it on. Ah. Um, the visibility is actually surprisingly good. I mean, compared to the LS2, it's like night and day. And I gotta tell you guys, like the fit, once you put them on, they just fit perfectly. I don't know what it is. The same is with this one, but they fit really well. Boom, visor down, good seal. Oh yeah, one more thing, they do fog up when you have just a single layer of, uh, of a visor here, but they also have these the, the pin lock system, so like a double layered windshield, I mean visor, and then uh, they will not fog up. I still yet have to test that, but you know, if you drive really slow all the time, then this will fall, fog up quite a bit. If you go above 30, 40, then it should be, should be fine. So yeah, once again, great visibility. I see all the way through here, maybe a bit Maybe when you look down, you see a bit less than on this kind of helmet, but it's really like not noticeable. The, the visibility is here really, really great. Okay, so, oh yeah, one, and it also has this double D system. So, you know, if you have to have a certified helmet for racing, then you need to have that. And 
it's not too bad actually. I thought it would be worse, but you know, if you're used to uh, just having a fit lock system like here, which is just a magnet, then this will be a bit more of a hassle, but you know, that's what it is if you want to have a uh, racing sand certified helmet. And by the way, also has all the necessary certificates. Um, I mean, Shoei is sort of legendary in this department. So let's get this one off. Oh yeah, the getting on and off part is a bit tricky in this one. Maybe I just need to um, wear it a bit uh, more. So yeah, Xperia 3. Now let's talk about the EX0. And this is sort of a retro inspired helmet. It also has different colors like red or yellow and this coloring sort of. And yeah, uh, I think it looks really slick. Actually in real life, I think it looks way better than on pictures. Really shiny, really stylish, but um, my biggest gripe with it, I, I wouldn't think that it would be one, but it is, is that it doesn't have any ventilation on the top. It's like half the price of the uh, X Spirit 3, so that's pretty cool. I mean, these helmets are also pretty far apart, but anyways, it's also way lighter, just weighs, uh, here it is, uh, 1.15 kilograms so that is still that is still really bearable you don't really feel it on your head that much and but it's really warm so even now when i was riding it's like 10 15 degrees outside my my head still gets quite warm i think on a motorcycle or if you would just ride a lot faster then um yeah you wouldn't feel that that much but yeah this is a warm helmet and surprisingly this is way 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 cooler than than that so it also has a drop down visor, visor which you know just all the moving parts are so satis satisfying here uh, it has a drop down visor once again you can also exchange it for a different one i really like this one and another cool thing about shoy is that the visors are really great so you don't get any reflections if you, even if you ride in night that is a huge issue i had even with goggles on uh, on my my helmet or with the, with the visor on my other helmet, and they also get like wider on the outside, like glasses. So yeah, the the view is just perfect. I mean, with this one, I could just really easily uh, ride at night with the visor down, and the vision was perfect. I mean, no issues at all. That's that's hard to do, man. That's hard to do if you have ever tried a visor on a helmet or a cheaper helmet, cheaper helmet. It also has a, a funny mm, looking sort of cap. I don't know how to call it. Um, I don't know what would be your favorite design, but this definitely gives you a bit of you know safety uh, from, from mud or from, from the sun. Um, I'm not really digging that style, but you know, it's cool it has it. Uh, but maybe if I would go out for a cycling e-bike ride in the woods, then probably I'll, I'd take it. But other than that, uh, not not really. So the visor is also quite cool because it's adjustable with these things here. So you can, if you have a bigger nose, you can just have it sit higher or lower. And it's also really easy to exchange the visor because you just set it into this setting here, and then, boom, just lift this part, and you can pull it out like so and then you can just pull it in like the same thing is on the other side then you just pull it in boom and then it locks in place boom as easy as that push these things then up yeah works flawlessly there's a bit less stuff i i can talk about with this helmet uh, apart from it also has you know the different shell sizes and all the different liners on the inside the eps liner is also pro but yeah you have a bit uh, a bit better field of view, like looking down, like this part would be a bit obstructed on the X Spirit 3. Um, also works perfect with, with glasses, by the way. It also has the double D um, system here with the anti-flop anti -flop mechanism. So yeah, it feels definitely much lighter on your head. This is really cool, uh, really practical when you ride a lot faster. But the thing is like you can also get goggles for this helmet. You just put them here. And probably this is what I would do if I would ride a lot and it would be colder than now because once you tilt your head a bit to the side and the air comes in here. And definitely this helmet is also louder than this one. There's not really a big difference in loudness if you put the visor up 
or down. But once again, you feel it a lot less on your head. I think that the uh, uh, fit in my case is even a bit better than, uh, than on this one. It's just more a bit more comfortable, but yeah, it, it gets warm. It really gets warm in this helmet, definitely. For summer use, it would be too warm for me. Um, but in these colder days, let's see which uh, one will I prefer after you know a couple couple weeks of uh, use. So yeah, if you ride above 50 kilometers an hour, definitely would recommend getting a motorcycle helmet. Uh, the Shoy ones are turned out to be really cool. Um, the thing is, like, oh, getting them on and off is a bit uh, is a bit tricky. I'll have to look over you know a couple of days um, or a couple of weeks. I'll be using them if it's, this is something that is bearable. But once you have them on. It's great. So this is my little guide on to you know which helmets to choose when you have a PV and basically what you need to look uh, for in uh, in helmets. If you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye.